Hi, my name is Ashley Villar. I am a postdoctoral fellow at Columbia University in the astronomy department. Um, today I'll be telling you about a project I've been working on, which is looking for anomalous events in astronomical time series. Um, in particular, I'm interested in something called supernovae, which are the explosive deaths of stars. Um, and scientifically, we care about these things because they form essentially almost all of the elements that we know of in the cosmos. We discover um, thousands and soon millions of these events every year. So it's important that we can um, rank them in some scientifically interesting way and trigger additional follow-up on the most interesting events in real time. Um, so in this study, we're specifically focusing on the most anomalous events and the unknown unknowns of our surveys. So in particular, um, we're making a physics, physics agnostic on anomaly detection pipeline, which hopefully can trigger on new physics that's unexpected and looks like nothing we've seen before. So I'm showing you an example of our data set here for just one supernova, it's a very normal supernova, um, where you can see that our data is multi-channel, each channel is a different color of light. Um, it's pretty sparse across time, given the duration that the event lasts for. And importantly, these events are aperiodic, um, and transient. So they, they show up and they disappear in a duration of about days to months, depending on the underlying physics. So what we're interested um, in doing is having an anomaly pipeline that's working on this active data and telling us if events are anomalous in real time without triggering on um, noisy data or data that's anomalous for some uninteresting reason. So very briefly, um, first, I'll tell you how the pipeline works. We interpolate our data using a Gaussian process, which interpolates over time and wavelength space. Once we have that nice newly gridded data, we pass that through a recurrent variational autoencoder, um, where the recurrent neurons are so that we can have um, arbitrary time scales. And then what we do with this autoencoder is we will look at the encoded space for uh, anomalous events. In particular, we use an isolation forest. Um, and so let me show you just one example of such an anomalous event where um, this is something called a superluminous supernova. I know the underlying physics because our data is from a simulated data set. And I know that the class this comes from is in fact just 2% of the training set. So to me, scientifically, this is an interesting anomalous event. Um, the pipeline agrees. It also finds it to be anomalous, where here I'm showing you um, how the anomaly score, I'm sorry, how the features change as a function of time, where the color indicates um, when the anomaly score reached a certain threshold to be considered an anomalous event. And what's exciting is that that happened very early on. It happens um, in particular before the light curve reaches its maximum light, which is important scientifically for us as that's kind of the optimal time to trigger additional follow-up. Um, and in fact, we can see that in encoding space, this is just one subset of that space, um, where I'm showing the this specific event kind of traveling as a function of time where purpleness represents time. And you can see, um, that it, it walks away in a way from the majority of classes shown in black um, as it gets more anomalous in time. So this is a, a exciting avenue um, and we're looking more into how now to apply this to real data um, to hopefully trigger on new physics sometime in the future. Thanks so much for listening.